So I was trying to think about what am I gonna talk about? What do I think about what's happening? There's been two talks that brought up ChatGPT. I'm gonna give you a third one, okay? What do we think is actually happening with that? Ever since ChatGPT came out earlier this year, it's like, oh my gosh, how do I survive? How do I win in this world? What am I gonna do? So I started thinking, well, this thing looks disruptive. Um, well, wait a minute, I've seen some disruptions. I mean, I'm old. I'm from three technology disruptions ago, but I'm not that old. 1890, you still have it, right? But I have seen three internet technology disruptions. The first one I saw is when I graduated. I'm the only Georgia Tech one here. About the 1990s, the internet was blowing up. World Wide Web, search happened, email. It was so strange when I first started Bell South, I was one of the first people to get email. I was like, what do you mean? I had it at Georgia Tech. You're just getting it now? And then all of a sudden, 2002, retail started. I see my colleague from Amazon here, right? Amazon came on the scene. And the cloud started happening, another disruption. And then I was in wireless operations. I was trying to plan the, the, the cellular network. And we thought we were doing fine until the iPhone came out. Data blew up, right? Overnight, 2007. We couldn't put in radios fast enough in the towers. Like it was hard to keep up. Why was that? They made it usable. They gave us mobile apps. Social happened. It was a big thing. It was a big, big disruption. So today I happen to be fortunate to be in the chief data office. I can do AI and data science. Generative AI is blowing up, I'll tell you. 80% of everything we do is generative AI, chat GPT type stuff. And I was trying to think of disruption. I couldn't think of this whole work from home thing. I could not work from home because of those disruptive dogs. <laughs> Milo and Quincy, okay? But I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about generative AI. Now, disruption, what do we mean by that? There's the definition there, right? Something that significantly alters the way consumers, industries, and businesses operate. And I showed you these things. What are the companies that did this? Google, right? Disrupted search, disrupted advertising. Amazon, you don't buy books, you know, in the bookstore anymore, you go bid them online. But all this thing, online retail, we talked about Apple with smartphones. But notice these things, they're kind of in an area, right? And if you think about generative AI, who's going to be the winner there? Maybe NVIDIA, maybe an open AI. I think they were valued at 90 billion. But what's different is that question below. It feels different. It feels like it's almost affecting everything, right? Now, what else is different? The adoption is so fast. Have you seen this? Chat GPT, two months, 100 million people, right? Netflix was 18 months. Look at that, right? The fastest ever. Now here's the thing that blew my mind. We look at it today. It almost affects everything. This is the percent impact, right? What scared me was like the first one. Wait a minute, that's me. Data <laughs> science, right? Right, customer care, programming. You're probably using it to write code, right? Hack code, fix code. Right, we use it all the time. Education, you know, sitting and talking about me, do my homework over there, right? Healthcare, everything, right? Percent, it's like, it's everywhere. So this is disruptive, right? Now, I wanna give you a feel for AT&T, okay? I told you 80% of the stuff we're doing is that now. Let me just show you some of the use cases, right? ChatGPT is great, you get answers, but does that know nothing about AT&T? I can't ask it, how many days off do I get if I've been here five years at AT&T? It doesn't know, right? <laughs> I can't ask a finance question, I can't ask a network question. So we have so many use cases. Well, I, want to do, I want those answers, I want them fast, I don't want to search for it. I just want to ask a question. So we're enabling all these business units to ask questions by teaching it about AT&T. On top of that, we have the out of the box thing, coding, right? Generate some code, fix this code, migrate this code. We did a trial. We put one group, you said, you can't use Ask AT. &T. We, we call Chat GPT as Ask AT and T internal. It's our own private instance. We said you can't use it. You can. The people that used it, 20 to 50 percent faster, depending on who you talk to. Okay, huge productivity gain. But it's not just data. It's not just documents. It's not just code. Now we have English as the new code. We just write it. I don't have to write SQL. I say, tell me how many customers Postpaid I had last month. Boom, there it is, right? So it's amazing. We have all these other use cases. Marketing, create me some content, right? 
uh, translate this from English to Spanish. We have so many customers that, that speak Spanish, they call us, all of our documents are in English. They have to translate it on the fly. Why don't I just do that for them, right? Classified documents, summarized documents. Now to give you some feel for how disruptive this is, we put out something that said, tell us your use cases. And in three weeks, we had 260 use cases across all the business units. We had to shut it down. We couldn't, we couldn't take them all. So we said, it's okay, it's too many. We're gonna nominate business leaders. You vet them and you bring them to us and then we'll figure out which are the most valuable ones. Now, what does that mean to me? What does it mean? I'm on the top of the list though, right? And you should think about it too. It's like, hey, I'm graduating. What does that mean to me? What if I go in the corporate world? The other thing you might think about is, is this an opportunity to be an entrepreneur? So I kind of think about those, those two personas as we go through this here. Now I did a lot of thinking is like, what have I learned of these past disruptions? And what have I learned at AT&T that maybe gives some clues as to how might you win in this world? And it happens to actually spell Gen AI. The first one is, the first principle is get there fast, okay? No matter what I see, Sydney had a great example. She came up with this great idea. We're the first in line with a great idea. We get funded, okay? The same thing happens, right? Get there fast, right? So think about if you're coming out, you're going into AT&T or the industry, you're coming out with some of these skills, you're gonna be in, the, in this workplace. Some people have been there 20, 30. I had a person in my group who was there 54 years, okay? Some of them might not wanna learn the new thing, right? <laughs> you're coming out, you can take advantage of that, right? Because you're gonna be sitting, so I, let's say you go into coding, right? And this person right next to you, let's say they do it and you don't, they're gonna be 50% faster, right? You gotta have it to compete. Now, what if you're an entre you wanna do entrepreneur thing? You know, if you look at these big disruptive things, what it looks like is if you get there fast, it's almost a winner take all, if not most, right? Look at the market share of those folks, right? AT&T, Apple dominates, they dominate everywhere in smartphones, right? So think about that also, right? Get there fast um, for both cases, no matter which way you go. Now, the next one is enable yourself broadly. What do I mean by that? I'm showing you Ask ATT here. This is our own internal chat GBT. I just asked to write some code. That's good for you, but could you actually do something more? Now, let's say you're in that developer role that second role right there, right? If this thing is so powerful, you could be more productive, but you actually might be able to do some of those other roles too. So it might not look like that. It might look like this, right? <laughs> you can possibly pick up some of those other things. In fact, they say the next billion dollar company in the next few years might only be 10 people. Why? Because of this thing, okay? So don't think you're narrow. In fact, we're doing it now. We actually crowdsource the requirements from all the comments we put in ChatGPT, all the comments, we create requirements and then we create code directly from them. Just cut out that whole thing, right? So super powerful, look to the left, look to the right. Now, of course, if you're gonna do something, you gotta have novel features, gotta be something new. What is that gonna be in this Gen AI world? Is it gonna be these large language models? ChatGPT, is that it? Let's say ChatGPT is off to the right there. That's the reference, okay? Did you know that when they put out the open source, in three weeks, they were 92% of the quality of ChatGPT? That might be actually a commodity at some point. So what are you gonna do? Well, let's take the lessons from the internet. I think AT&T's 20%, Victor will uh, correct me, 20% of the world's traffic we carry. It's a bit of a commodity, right? <laughs> Look at where all the value was on top. All those folks got the dollars there, right? It might be the same thing here. The large language models might be a commodity. Think about doing something on top of them. Like Sydney had OpsGPT, did it on top of it. I, didn't, I wasn't limited by it, right? So that's where the value is. Now this one is maybe not so obvious. Let me try to explain it. Automated actions. Now ChatGPT is great. You get information, okay? Information from ChatGPT, that's cool. Information about your own stuff, that's even better, right? What if you get information and recommended actions? Okay, now I can actually do something. What if you automated those actions? Even more value, right? Let me just give you a quick example. Summarize this public data. Okay, chat GPT. Summarize my meeting. We're doing it today. You take the transcript, you automatically summarize the meeting. Boom, I don't have to take notes. What if I create all the action items too? 
That's even more valuable. What if I automated the action items? Send this email, set up the next meeting, do this, reboot this thing, right? That's where the value is. So think of the full thing, go to actions. The last one might be a bit obvious, but iterate. You're not gonna get it right the first time, right? If you ever put in chat GPT, you type a question, ooh, that wasn't what I wanted. Let me try it again. Iterate on top of it. You're gonna have to try it, check it, bounce it off users. In the large language model, they did this, this term, RLHF, reinforcement learning with human feedback, okay? Get that feedback. So in a nutshell, get there fast, enable it broadly, do it novel, go to the actions, and iterate. Now, let's think back again, right? You're here at SMU, and you're thinking about, what is this for me? You've got a unique advantages. You're young, you're adaptable, you can go in the workforce. If you adopt these things, you're gonna be productive. You're gonna have folks that, and they're a long time, they're tired of that, right? I don't want to learn the next thing. Now, the other thing is, what if you wanna do the entrepreneur thing? There might never be a better time. This thing is so disruptive, right? Touching everything. Anyway, think about that. We'd love to have you at AT&T. Join our data science scholar program or talk to us afterwards.